working for John Ford uh, on the man who shot Liberty Valance and, and then later Donovan's Reef, uh, you know, so just so much has been written about the man, and uh, I think some of some of it seems to paint him as this simple kind of Irishman, but in reality, he was really a very complex uh, person. He was an intellect, um, tough Irish intellect. I don't think there can be anything worse than that. Uh, in other words, he has all the demons in him, the Irish demons. And he's also intelligent. And uh, when the script is written, etc., if there was ever a difficult scene, he'd always shoot it at the end of the day. <clears throat> so uh, he'd break for tea about four. And they'd say, all right, now we're going to do this scene. And so, you know, walk through it, put the marks down. <clears throat> and go for the first take. Now we're all set and all juiced and ready to go, right? And he'd look at his watch and say, all right, that's the wrap, first shot in the morning. Now you leave the set like this, you're wired. And all night long you're saying, I, geez, I was ready to go. I mean, why did I have to live with this like this? And say, was I? Then you start to criticize yourself in the scene. You say, oh my God, I would have done that. Oh, it's wrong. Mm. So now you come to work the next morning knowing how you're going to change what you're doing. And you see that the set has all changed. All the marks are up, the camera's gone, everything. You say, all right, now let's uh, run that scene again. Totally different and right. In other words, he'd let you sweat it for a night and he'd sweat it for a night. And you do it in the morning. I mean, that's how, how bright he was about things like that. Uh, Bill Claudier told me in an interview that he had tried to talk Ford into shooting Liberty Valance in color. And then he felt the black and white was was wrong, it was dated, or whatever. But then when he was actually seeing the dailies and seeing the, the mood of the piece, that there was no other way but to shoot it in black and white. Well, black and white saves you a lot of problems. Uh, it takes you back into the, into the mystical past. I mean, for instance, there's so many films you see today that'd be better in black and white. Except that the distributors won't handle them. They say our audiences want color. So if you have a night scene in a dark alley in color, it really doesn't amount to much. If you did it in black and white like in the old days, what they could do with shadows, it'd be much more dramatic. I mean, look at the, look at the Joan Crawford films. The Curtis, the way he yeah, used the Yeah, these bars of light and the moods and the beauty. I mean, it was, for some reason, I don't know how to put this here. For some reason, it allowed you to experience it in its purity. Whereas in color, it allows you to tear it apart. Because if there's a red rose in the corner, it's going to be just as red, because they're going to light it. Having nothing to do with the scene, your eye goes, I think it blows up. Working with John Wayne, uh, I did the Comancheros and uh, Liberty Valance, Diamond's Reef. The scene that always, always stands out in, in my mind in Liberty Valance, uh, when you have that good 30 second stare down with, with him after you've tripped Jimmy Stewart, yeah. uh, the hash slinger. Uh, Ford and, and Wayne, of course, had worked together for years. What was their, their, their thing like? Did I guess very little communication going on there? Uh, With who? Between Wayne and Ford? Uh, <coughs> what do you mean little? I don't understand. In terms of that communication between <coughs> actor and director. Oh no, Ford had talked to Duke all the time. Yeah. Oh no, he directed Duke. And I think Duke relied on him very much to direct him. Because I think that Duke felt very, very enamored of of what uh, Jack, Coach, Pop, or whatever they called him, had done for his career. Because he'd say, oh, don't do that, Duke. And Duke would go like that and then do what he told him to do, and boy, it was just brilliant. I mean, he, I, I think uh, Ford was very responsible for Wayne's tremendous uh, persona in Westerns. He had one of the great death scenes in, in Liberty Valance, and you, you hit you hit the floor and your knees fall forward, take one step off and into the street. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah, I, I did that once and... Uh, he said, what are you doing, kid? I said, well, I'm such a bad guy, I thought I'd fall out of my knees like I was praying and then realized that didn't work and go. 
He says, yeah, okay, all right. Give me a bunch of silver dollars and stick them in his hat. Because I'd won a poker game just before that. And uh, so when I went down, you know, the silver flies out of my head onto the boardwalk, and one of them spinning, and you could hear it. And it was so good that they had to cut it out because it was, it was going in the mythology, see, or too far in the mythology. So then, of course, you know, a week later, when we did the interior of the gambling game, he says, don't forget to put the silver dollars in your hand. I said, Oop. you're right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Don and Zarif was a real change of pace from that picture. It seemed like a lot of fun to, to make that one, didn't it? Well, there's the word, fun. Uh, he called me up, and he said, um, I want you to do a flick for me this summer. I said, I'd like to read it. I really he said, don't read it, just do it. <laughs> And I said, well, hey, Mr. Ford, he says, call me Augie, I'll call you Wash. You know, we have all these nicknames. And I said, well, I, I said, it's my policy to kind of read a script first and stuff. He says, look, he says, don't you want to spend eight weeks in Hawaii this summer? And I said, yeah. He said, don't you want your kids to be brown as berries? I said, yeah. He says, then do the film. And I said, yeah. And that's all I knew about it. And that was absolutely what it ended up being, was summer fun. That's my description of that film. He took all his old pals to Hawaii for eight weeks. We were over in Kauai, just doing this nonsensical, fun, fun film. And uh, I mean, look who's in it, all his old, you know, studies. And I think it was kind of, kind of like a goodbye film to his to his boat to the South Pacific or the Central Pacific or whatever it was and to the, the great days of, of whatever the I think, because you know, hurricane and all these things that he'd done. And so we, we, we did have fun. He had fun. 